During the two years of this emergency, the federal government has greatly expanded its, the scope of its activities, powers, and spending. And now the pushback. It's taking many forms, and one of them is a growing momentum around the idea of holding a convention of states to amend the Constitution to curb federal powers. Wisconsin and Nebraska are the latest two states to officially join the call for a convention, bringing the total now up to 17. That's the halfway mark to the 34 states that are needed to hold the convention. It's a bit of a radical idea in that it's never happened before, but Article 5 of the Constitution does allow for it. We have with us today Mark Meckler, the main driving force behind this movement. He is the president and co-founder of the Convention of States Action. Mark, welcome. Thanks for having me. So I think we had better start with you giving us Convention of States 101. Sure, I think this is important. A lot of people don't know about this because it's a little used, in fact, never used portion of the Constitution. Article 5 gives us the methods by which we can propose amendments. We have 27 amendments to the Constitution. All of them have been proposed by the first method in the first clause of Article 5. That's when two-thirds of Congress proposes something, goes out to the states for ratification by three-quarters of the states. What we're doing is using the second clause of Article 5 when two-thirds of the states, today that would be 34 states, call for a convention for the same purposes, the states then convene, they discuss potential amendments if they can get 38 states to agree. Those amendments become suggestions to the states and they go out for the same sort of ratification. It takes 38 states, three-quarters of states, to ratify anything that might be proposed out of convention. And today what's being proposed is what's called a subject matter convention. There are three subject matter areas. The convention will discuss anything that would impose fiscal restraints on the federal government, like a balanced budget amendment, anything that would impose term limits on federal officials, and that would include, by the way, staffers, bureaucrats, and the judiciary, and anything that would include scope and jurisdiction restraints on the federal government. That would be things like telling them, no, you can't be involved in health care or the environment or education, things that were never intended for the federal government. Right now, there are 17 states who have signed on and you need 34 for the convention to be convened. We'll just put up the map here of the states you have on board so far, those that have passed resolutions in at least one of their houses and those that are discussing it. How do you expect to get to 34? What's the math here? Yeah, I, well, I think just to give you a, a couple of quick points coming up here shortly, uh, we passed out of a South Carolina Senate committee this week, and we've already passed out of the House. So we're on our way to passage in South Carolina, West Virginia, we're moving right now. We expect movement there and, and probably passage in the next, next couple of weeks. We've already passed the Senate there several times. We look good in the House this year. Ohio looks good, Pennsylvania looks good, Iowa looks good, Kansas looks good. So there's a lot of movement happening this year. The path to 34, another 17 states, is primarily lined with states where, that have both houses of the legislature controlled by Republicans. Today, that's 31 states have both houses controlled by Republicans. If you count Virginia, they have one house controlled by Republicans now. That will likely flip in 2023. I think that takes you to 32 states. Minnesota has one house controlled by Republicans. I think that will flip in the next election. That would take you to 33. And I think there are a couple of other states that are becoming battleground states for the state legislature. I would say Nevada is probably top of the list there. So I think we could see 34 states with both houses controlled by Republicans no later than 2024. If I read Article 5 correctly, and I may not have, <laughs> it looks like Congress has to actually convene the convention. Is that right? Congress has what are called ministerial duties. That's a legal term of art, uh, sometimes called secretarial duties, meaning they must execute those duties. And so what it says is Congress shall call a convention and the shall is triggered by 34 states requesting that convention. So they have a constitutional obligation to do so. If they were to choose not to do so, I doubt that happens, but if they were to choose not to do so, the states retain sovereign authority to meet any time they want. If you look at the history of Article 5 and the second clause, it was put in specifically to allow the states to wire around Congress and around the federal government more generally. And this is because Colonel George Mason asked the question, does any tyranny ever propose amendments to restrain its own tyranny? The answer is no. So they wanted to cut the federal government out of the process. So the federal government actually has absolutely no role to play in convention outside of counting the applications and making the call. Each state can send as many delegates as they like. They can send one, they can send 100, but each state will have one vote. This is a convention of states, not a convention of delegates, not a convention of populations. 
So each state gets a single vote. So I do imagine that states like New York and California will try to sabotage the process, potentially try to propose amendments that are outside the scope of convention, as I described earlier. They will be overruled by states that are Republican dominated because, like I said, there'll be there are currently 31. There'll be probably 34 states dominated by Republicans. There'll be a supermajority there. And so there's really not much that these states, large or not, can do to derail the convention once it convenes. OK. And there's also the criticism or the argument that, you know, the federal government already ignores provisions in the Constitution, has overstepped, you know, the bounds of its powers a lot, especially in the last year. So what's to say that a new amendment to the Constitution will change that? Yeah, you know, I think that's a, one of the best arguments I've heard or one of the best questions. It was the question that I had when I first looked at this. As a conservative, I always think, well, the federal government doesn't follow the Constitution anyway. The reality is, if you really look into it, there's an underlying question is which Constitution are we referring to? Are we referring to the one that's under glass at the National Archives? Or are we referring to the one that they currently operate under, which is the one as interpreted by the Supreme Court? And the reality is they operate under the Supreme Court's constitution, what I would call the court constitution. Uh, there, you can actually buy that constitution from the federal government. It's over 3,000 pages long. It contains every case ever issued by the Supreme Court. It weighs over 10 pounds. That's the one they operate according to. And that's what we're trying to get at, is to get rid of a bunch of that stuff and go back to the original Constitution. So they largely do follow the Constitution. It's just not the one that you or I think of. And is it possible once at the convention that the delegates could decide to entertain other uh, agenda items, other potential amendments? The delegates are actually limited by the resolutions passed by the states. Those resolutions are virtually identical, as I've described, three subject matter areas, fiscal restraints, term limits, and restraints on the scope and jurisdiction of the federal government. Anything proposed outside of that, and that's not to say people wouldn't try, California would certainly try, anything outside of that is non-germane to the convention and could be gaveled out by the leadership as a non-germane proposal. If we were to assume even that that somehow passed 34 more conservative or Republican states, it would still be a non-germane issue. It would essentially be null and void because the convention would have exceeded its authority, the delegates would have exceeded their authority, and in the end, it takes 38 states to ratify anything that comes out of convention anyway. So you'd have to get to 38 for anything that they could even get out of convention. One of the provisions that you want to get an amendment on is limiting government spending, uh, balancing budget. Could the Congress, could Congress retaliate and say, all right, we'll cut the budget. That'll be funding that goes to the states, which is, you know, not an insignificant amount of money. Is there any way to mitigate that scenario? Yeah, I mean, I certainly think Congress has the power of the purse. They control spending at the federal level. And what I'm more worried about is Congress saying, look, you're going to force us to balance our budget. So we are going to put unfunded mandates on the states and force you to run the same programs you've always run. Only now we're going to make you pay for them. We're going to make you tax your citizens and pay for them. And I think we could and we should pass a provision making unfunded mandates from the federal government unconstitutional. I would also argue that any balanced budget amendment should include provisions limiting the way that the federal government can balance the budget. So these could include taxation caps, spending caps. It could require the block grant funding of the same amount of funding to the states that we've always had. This is not necessarily a proposal to cut funding. It's not necessarily a proposal for any particular mechanism. This is a proposal to require the federal government to get their fiscal house in order. All right. So we're out of time. I just want to give you a chance. Is there anything else we're missing about this? And when do you expect, hope uh, that there might be this convention called? Yeah, the main thing that I wanted to say is that this is not a partisan effort. I did talk about Republican legislatures, but the reality is this returns the power to all states, blue states, red states, and everything in between. This is a citizens movement against the ruling elite in Washington, D.C. We have to take the power back from D.C. because they're never going to give it back to us. My hope on the inside is to get this done in 2024. On the outside, I'm shooting for 2026. And do you have any conversations going on with Democrats that are interested in this? We absolutely do. In fact, uh, last week we had a Massachusetts committee pass this out of committee. That committee was 14 Democrats and three Republicans. They passed it out. Yesterday we had a great hearing in Maryland. So there are Democrats that are coming on board. We, we had Democrats vote for this in Kansas. It came out of a Kansas House committee. So definitely this is a movement that's growing, I think, on both sides of the aisle. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mark Meckler. Thank you for having me.
I'm here live in Philadelphia at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. When you hear the phrase, lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, these are the folks we should think of, those who anonymously gave their lives. Well, today you have a chance to volunteer. You need to volunteer for conventionofstates.com, the movement that's going to save the country. These folks were willing to step up and give everything. We need you to give just a little bit. Go to conventionofstates.com and volunteer today.